Um, yeah, tell me about how you planned the your trip across Canada and like, I don't know, like what was the remotest area that you went through and how long did it take and all yeah, that Yeah, yeah. So it's, the, again, the lighting sucks, but the, the poster my parents made for me, it's like behind me. Like you could see, it's like kind of my, my social media profile picture and then like <laughs> Canada with like the line that it, that I took. I planned it just by, I guess, just like, it's one of those things. It's like, I don't know how to describe it. Like sometimes there's stuff that you just got to do, you know, like, yeah. I'm not sure that I ever really had a choice. <laughs> um, on the whole, like, you just like, I'm going to do this. And so I started to like obsess about it and I really am like, I'm a planner, like at heart, I think in general, I really like knowing like the details of how I'm going to do something. And so mm -hmm. I had a pretty chill day job at the time I was working at Technicolor, like the post-production place, which I don't think is Technicolor, it doesn't really matter. And so I was just like researching like what the routes I could take were and all and like how I would carry the stuff I would need to carry and like yeah yeah how do um, you carry stuff that you need to carry so carrying stuff is really interesting and yeah. everyone does it differently and actually one of the things I love about just like touring cycling in general is it's like there's no real like one size fits all like how you store your gear on your bike or, or whatever you're doing and I just think it's so cool because like when you're touring you find other people and they set it all up differently so the way that I did it was I bought off the shelf bike racks and I drilled holes in my frame and I put one facing forwards and I put one facing backwards and I bought like 20 liter dry bags, like big blue dry bags mm -hmm. from, from mountain equipment co-op and, and not unlike it, California. Oh my God does not rain <laughs> ever. Yeah, it, the weather was interesting at times for sure. So yeah, I wanted them to be waterproof and I bought like basically replacement equipment for attaching panniers to the racks. And so okay. I like yeah. put a piece of coroplast inside and then like basically screwed that to the side because the problem with panniers for unicycling is that you get heel strikes because your cranks are so short I was gonna, so, like uh, how is there even room for a rack on a unicycle like i might be able to explain a little huh. better i do have this is like not the optimal device for this but like uh, it, it's gonna be hard to see because of the lighting but there's a unicycle and yeah. here i like i have a hole for like a rack that's like that goes here and so Okay. ignoring the pipe that I'm holding on to, but it would like come off over here like this. And then okay. the, the actual panniers would only hang down just a little bit. Oh, and so okay. yeah. you get the clearance, but they have to be custom and they have to be modified. Okay. Um, that makes more and sense. So, huh. Yeah, exactly. And so that's, that's how I made it work. And, and it was with a bigger tire. That one's a 700 C, um, wheel. I was using a 36, so there's a little more room for stuff. But I did carry like a tent and a drone and a GH5 and a tripod, uh, sleeping bag, like all the stuff. Like I had way too much crap with me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It was it was a lot of fun. It took me 111 days to do the trip, nice. and it was 9,250 9, kilometers. I have no idea what that is in miles, but <laughs> three thousand and some. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a long way. Uh, I mean, it's across Canada, right? Like it, that, it, it's yeah. across North America, and not exactly. at the steepest yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, and I and I did. I took like a lot of side trips because I was like, well, I'm here and I'm in good shape. Yeah. Like I would, you know, I would like go to see friends. I would go to see stuff that was like worth seeing. I thought that was kind of on the way. So like, yeah, I don't know. It was really fun. What I was a typical a, like daily mileage for you? So my brain works in kilometers, but uh, like yeah, sorry, it, kilometers. That's average, all right, we'll we'll try to translate here. <laughs> I would say you have to translate for me, or I can get out an app. But I would do like a hundred kilometers a day, roughly. Oh, kilometers a day, okay. So about an hour's worth of driving I would do in one day. Which what is, is that? Like seventy hours, hour, so like, like that. Well, it depends upon how fast you're going. <laughs> yeah, Are we talking yeah. freeway driving or? <laughs> freeway driving. Absolutely freeway driving. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It was good. And so, and the thing that is really cool, like the reason why I didn't do it on a bike, which makes way more sense and is a lot easier, is uh, you meet so many more people when you're that weirdo out on the road. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, why are you here? 
how did you get here? Where are you going? And like on a daily basis, like several people would pull over and they'd like offer me snacks and like places to stay and like, you know, just kind of like concerned people. I've received two Bibles while riding my unicycle. I guess I looked lost and the Gideons were like, okay, I'll be a little bit of something, you know, and like, you know, people, yeah, like places to stay and stuff like that. And so it's just like, it's just, it's really cool because you kind of have that gimmick that opens up like a couple more doors than you might if you're like a, a more normal, like bike tourist type.